I'm often asked, Hey, Jamie, how do you stay in shape? Well, at home, I just cut some firewood and ride the electricity bike and do stuff like that that's useful. But right now, I'm away from home, and in the suburbs, there, there's, like, nothing to do. So I have to, like, you have to, like, make up stuff to do to not get fat. I don't want to get fat. Anyway, everyone else is asleep, and this is my chance. I saw a hill over there behind a church, hmm, a little bit down the street. It was like a 200 to 400 meter long hill. I don't remember exactly how long it was. But anyway, I'm going to go run up it 10 times. And then walking on the way down, I'm going to do push-ups. And if I can find an appropriate tree, I'm going to do chin-ups. So since everyone's asleep, I'm leaving them a note. Jamie went running. The hardest part about exercising is deciding to do it. So here I am at the top of the hill. I just ran straight up it when I got here as a warm up. And it goes way down there. It's at least 400 meters. 400 meters. I start slurring my words when I'm running. Uh, so I think I might actually count that as one and run up it eight times. And then one as a cool down. That'll be pretty good. And I'm looking around for a tree that I can do chin ups on. Hopefully I can find one on the walk back down before I start for real. Shaking out those legs, getting them ready to go. There was a big middle part you missed. I had to hop a barbed wire fence to find it, but... Halfway back down. There's a nice flat fish spot. Mm, those chin-ups and push-ups look a little sloppy. I'm gonna get rid of the camera now so I can concentrate. <sighs> halfway. I have to take a break at halfway to, you know, shake things out. See if anything feels tight or weird. Do a bit of stretching and stuff. Catch my breath so that I can come back in the second half with some extra speed. And why am I being so quiet? Because it's early in the morning and there's like houses around here and stuff. I don't need everyone coming out to their windows gawking at the weird guy running up and down the hill. Not that that stopped me. All right, second set. For the next 20 minutes, we are no longer in human mode. Acting like a wild snarling beast is totally cheesy and silly to look at. 
But seriously, you cannot slack off when you're going rawr, rawr. So, cheesy is good. At least to me. And about halfway down on the sixth or seventh one, I had an experience that reminded me of a question I'm asked a lot. I was walking down, you know, huffing and puffing, and suddenly all the colors got really bright, like someone turned the knob up to 11, and the sounds got really vivid, and suddenly I was like standing on this planet, and it was amazing, and everything was so cool, and the sky was great, and uh, yeah, I was like high, and people are often asking me, what do you like high or something, dude? Because you know, I get excited and basically the answer is yes, often I am high and it has nothing to do with drugs because no amount of drugs can give you the kind of high you can get off life and I can tell you why that is. <sighs> can we catch my breath for a second? So say inside your body you've got these good feel meters and there's different categories for these. There's like, you know, the, the amount of endorphins you've got running through you at any particular time. And then there's like having just seen boobies o meter or whatever that is. And then over here you've got the having done a good job o meter. Now the problem is if you take drugs or take any kind of shortcut like that, your having done a good job o meter will always be zero at best. You can fill all your other meters up to 100% but you're never gonna have anything in the I've sincerely and honestly done a good job o meter In fact, if you take a shortcut, you're probably gonna end up with a negative in that category. <clears throat> and first I wanna say that being high is a totally natural thing. It's been considered something only, you know, something you're not supposed to do because people so often use drugs to do it now, which ends up being a problem and I'll tell you why in a second, but being high on having done a good job and just feeling good about life and just doing things, that's totally normal. Um, so the reason drugs are so dangerous and you know things like that where you get a quick fix is because you haven't put the work in to do a good job, to put anything in this I've done a good job o meter. And the thing with that o meter is that it lasts longer than all the rest of them. You know, you can get excited from jumping off a cliff and you get this rush of wah! And, but, but after, you know, that adrenaline is, it doesn't last very long. Then you have to go do it again and again. And you can get a, you can get a bit of the, I've done a good job from doing something like jumping off a cliff into some water or something because you overcame some fear and you're like, yeah, I did a good job. But you know, taking drugs, you'll never get it. And this, uh, this I've done a good job meter lasts your entire life and you're always putting things in or taking things out of it and every time you you take the shortcut you put a negative in there and if you keep making yourself feel great because of drugs you fill up all these other meters to a hundred percent and you keep reducing this one past zero you get negative 10 negative 20 negative 50 and at some point i mean you just keep feeling worse and worse all the time and the drugs can't keep keeping up with it because you have this huge negative over here and the drugs just can't can't counteract that enough to make you feel good again and that's the trap of being a junkie and you know your life turns to crap on the other hand every time you do a good job on something and you feel good about yourself for having done it you put a plus in there and that lasts forever I mean I can remember things I, I can remember all kinds of things I've done in my life that I, I feel proud of I'm like yeah I did a great job I'm so glad I did that like I can remember the first race I ever ran and won. Actually, it doesn't even matter that I won it. it. It was coming down that home stretch, and it was only like a kilometer, but this was in grade six, so it was like 11. It seemed like a marathon. But I'm coming down the home stretch, and Craig is over here, and he's running full blast, and I'm running full blast, and I got to a point where I was like, I can see the finish line, and my legs are screaming at me, and my body's saying, Arr! and I had a choice there, and I was like, all right. I can either kind of coast or I can decide that I'm either finishing flat out or not at all. And I went with the flat out and I decided I'm either going to finish strong or not at all. And I did in fact do a face plant across the finish line and I won, but that part doesn't matter. And it doesn't even matter that I did finish. What matters to me most that I remember is that when I had the choice, I made the choice to go for it. 
And that, that's going to stick with me forever. Um, and every time you make one of those choices where you, where, you, where you have, you know, an easier way to get out of something, or you can really go for it and, you know, put your heart on the line. Every time you make that choice, even if you fail, you know, at that task at the time, the fact that you went for it will stick with you. And you'll just have this permanent piece of highness. I don't know if that sounds right. And you can just, that'll just be with you in life all the time. It's pretty sweet. So go for it. And sometimes when you get back, if you did a good job, you get French toast and bacon and sweet potatoes. You're welcome. H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y N Z. Now you are a super baby, super baby. Super baby. <laughs>